Hello students, welcome back to the course on organizational behavior, individual dynamics in organization. So we are moving through one of the most uh, important modules of this particular course, which is on knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding, and typically knowledge management as such. Today we look into the fourth lecture uh, of this particular module, where we look into how we can integrate knowledge sharing and minimize the effects of knowledge hiding. I'm Dr. Abraham Sirlaisak. I'm a faculty at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So welcome again to this uh, lecture. Today's theme would be, when referring to different knowledge sharing conditions, the interplay between sharing and hiding behaviors seems to generate different outcomes. So we are essentially pitching for an environment, an organizational environment typically, where we have both the understanding of knowledge hiding and we are trying to propose newer and improved ways to share knowledge. So let's understand uh, knowledge sharing and typically knowledge hiding from, from uh, 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 its core. Let's, though in the previous lecture I have tried to introduce knowledge hiding, I've, I've taken the help of the seminal work by Connelly et al. 2012, in which they actually come up with the dimensionality. I've also discussed on some of the, uh, the important strategies that are observed in the organization in terms of knowledge hiding, what they have described as playing dumb, evasive hiding, rationalized hiding. And specific to our Indian context, I've also mentioned about the counter questioning. Today, we'll take a step back and we'll try to understand what is the relevance of understanding or studying knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding. So knowledge sharing is important, no doubt about it, but knowledge hiding is equally critical. And this is the point I wanted to stress here. In one of our research specifically, we have tried to outline a clear distinction between knowledge hiding and other counterproductive workplace behaviors. So. Uh, I'm, I'm not going through the entire detail, but today I would like to take again the help of, because as you would have seen, that these two modules, specifically module 11 and module 12 is basically more on the research that is emerging in this domain, because we don't have any, any support from the textbook. There are still research studies that are evolving in these two areas. One is knowledge hiding, another is employee voice, employee silence. Similarly, I would like to tend to take this especially last couple of lectures of the particular module from the basis of or with the background of research either what we have conducted because we have seminal research background in terms of knowledge hiding or we also take the support of standalone seminal research papers in employee voice as well as silence. So in one of our studies, we have looked into what knowledge hiding specifically is and how it is different from the other counterproductive workplace behaviors. Now, we have seen some of the behaviors like OCB, organizational citizenship behavior, which is on the positive side. When you look into the negative side, there are certain behaviors or behavioral connotations which are actually counterproductive to the entire organization as such. Let's look into this. When we look into situations or behaviors like aggression, when we look into something like social undermining, when we look into other scheme of other behaviors like knowledge hoarding, knowledge hiding, let's say incivility, social undermining, all these are counterproductive workplace behaviors. Now, when we look into especially incivility, it's like you have certain individual within the organization who has or who displays unequivocally certain, you know, workplace incivility in terms of maybe communication, in terms of behavior, in terms of how you interact or in terms of even the look or in terms of even the way they dress or something like that, which, which might be offensive for them or offensive for the entire organization culture as it is. But we would also try to see or we would also look into or if you look into your own organization and understand or just introspect you will see that there are cases of social undermining also there are there are issues when uh, you know individuals tend to socially undermine others maybe to get an edge over others maybe they are uh, having a certain element of professional jealousy 
it's a real thing it's a big thing and maybe they are having some issues with respect to how fast you are progressing within the organization or how meticulous you are in doing each and everything so all these issues or all these problems are actually you know making them or creating a lot of pent up feelings and how it is vented out it might be in terms of social undermining it might be like social undermining in a public sphere so it could be that these behaviors do exist in your organization but sometimes you are not aware of or most of the times you are aware of but you are not in a position to understand and reciprocate in a similar manner similarly if you look into another behavior let's say deception it is like you are Uh, you know uh, some some of your team members will say that okay i didn't understand this this particular assignment altogether so let me get a clarity first let me ask our superior once we have a clarity then we'll submit it you are also thinking in similar lines because he or she has not submitted it there is a fair chance of possibility that the deadline will be extended but on the particular deadline you see that everybody has submitted other than you now there are situations which have happened in your organization for you so this is something that uh, translates into deception you were told something or you were communicated something in the end the result is something else similarly if you look into other aspects of counterproductive workplace behaviors something which is very critical is again knowledge holding knowledge hiding and absence of knowledge sharing i have tried to communicate the actual difference between absence of knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding specifically and i will try to make a recap of that what we have discussed yesterday here for a second when we look into situations where individuals have some internal information or knowledge they are expected to share but there are times when you ask them or you are kept in the dark deliberately to make sure that the knowledge is not shared so absence of knowledge sharing sounds like knowledge hiding this is the premise but when you look it closer or a careful understanding or the careful lit- reading of the literature will show you that absence of knowledge sharing need not be knowledge hiding because let's look into a typical situation where you are having some knowledge but you don't have the full knowledge about something let us let us understand it from an example point of view you are the the organization you are working for has brought in a new uh, let's say a erp system or a portal which is bit different from what you were using before now since you are new to the system you have undergone a training and the organization or your your superior in the organization or the reporting authority in the organization expects that you have to share the particular knowledge or what you have understood or learned through the seminar to the entire public unfortunately what happens is that you are not still clear about the nitty gritties and the nuances of those particular uh, software or how it performs or how it works so you might be of the opinion or you might be thinking that if i'm willing to share but if i share it may sound like i have not attended the workshop altogether or maybe it may also sound that the workshop was so clear because you have given a report like you have attended and you you you, you know you enjoyed or you you benefited a lot out of it but when the reality or when you are made accountable for that when you are not telling something or when you are not disclosing something then it might sound that you are not a good learner or you cannot you know reciprocate what you have learned so to cut down on that image what you generally do is that you you keep silent now that is absence of knowledge sharing and this is not knowledge hiding so please understand absence of knowledge sharing might there be in organization but many a time you feel that you understand that it need not be knowledge hiding specifically 
Another important thing is knowledge hoarding. When it comes to knowledge hoarding specifically, there is knowledge hiding that is happening, but it is time bound. It is for a certain period of time. And I will try to relate it in the next module with strategic silence. Why silence in an organization is strategic? When you look into something like knowledge hoarding, you are trying to hide that particular knowledge, maybe for one reason that you think that this is not the right time to disclose that. Reason number two, you might not be confident with the boss that he knows or he will be able to or she will be able to appreciate and acknowledge that you have given a solution to the problem. So you might wait for the right time. So knowledge hoarding is thinking that you are hiding, thinking that maybe tomorrow, maybe two days after, maybe two weeks afterwards or maybe two years later, you are going to share the particular knowledge, but it is not happening today. So that's the difference between knowledge hoarding and specifically knowledge hiding. Now, if we look into specifically knowledge hiding as defined yesterday, it is nothing but intentional withholding of knowledge when requested. Now, when you look into knowledge sharing specifically, knowledge sharing involves a set of behaviors that aid the exchange of acquired knowledge. Because if you are not trying to, or at least attempting to share the knowledge, you are not in a process of knowledge sharing. And the knowledge sharing supports organization's competitive advantage for the simple reason that the moment you are aware of, the moment you have more knowledge to work on, you are going to make a better system or you are, you are going to bring out a more important or creative solution for the problem in hand. Any organization which has a severe issue or a severe problem, knowledge management system is a lacuna for them in, in their organization, then that organization particularly is not going to get a competitive advantage over its competitors. Please note that. So when you are looking into such situations where knowledge sharing is happening, it essentially, it essentially supports organization's competitive advantage. Now when you talk about specifically knowledge sharing, take a moment and think, what is the most critical aspect pertaining to knowledge sharing? If you look into knowledge sharing specifically, you will understand that the most important aspect towards knowledge sharing is nothing but the willing participation of individuals. If you are, you know, trying to coerce or force knowledge sharing on a particular organization, still, if the members of the organization are, are not ready for that, then the knowledge sharing or the entire knowledge management principle is going to fail. So ladies and gentlemen, please understand this. If you are in a system of knowledge management, if you are trying to you know, increase the knowledge sharing within the organization, it is subject to one thing and that is nothing but the willing participation of employees. If the employees in itself are not willing to share the knowledge, because it is, it is, I repeat, an individually driven activity. There is no denying the fact that it is an individually driven activity. Whatever be the system you are keeping in place, whatever be the organizational resources you are deploying, to enhance the knowledge sharing, knowledge sharing is not going to happen unless and until there is actual willing participation of employees there. So when knowledge sharing is related to willing participation of employees, what becomes critical is employee in itself. How, why they share the knowledge becomes relevant. So that is where this the scope of knowledge hiding comes into picture. Otherwise, see, if you look into every single organization, there are now resources specifically deployed or allocated for enhancing the knowledge sharing. You see most of the software, uh, you know, companies or most of the knowledge workers are working on platforms which are shareable and which are actually driven by the organization as such to share or to facilitate the knowledge sharing. Still, still in knowledge management, knowledge sharing happens to be a big problem for the simple reason that there is no willing participation that is happening. Unless and until your employees are willingly participating in knowledge sharing activity, knowledge sharing is not going to happen. That 
makes us or paves the way to the elephant in the room which is knowledge hiding many a time we fail to recognize in the in the quest of improving the knowledge management within an organization we fail to understand that knowledge sharing is is important but what is more important is to understand and acknowledge that there might be a possibility of knowledge hiding as well so in that situation you have to understand that knowledge hiding is the intentional withholding of knowledge when requested i will also put things into perspective by just citing one more thing if you look into the entire literature of knowledge management 95 percent plus studies have happened in knowledge sharing and it is less than 5% which which has happened in knowledge hiding it talks volumes about how knowledge hiding is not understood as a significant factor in organization so this is what i would like to stress with this module this is deliberately made a part of this organizational behavior course because it is emerging as one of the key aspects in organizational behavioral context similarly employee voice and employee silence is also something that has emerged as one of the most important or critical aspects or kingpin factor in organizational behavior management so i hope with this introduction it is almost clear that what knowledge hiding is and what knowledge hiding is not and i hope it is also clear that though knowledge sharing is important knowledge hiding is equally important so let's move to another dimension of knowledge hiding where we tend to understand some of the antecedents of knowledge hiding when we specifically look into knowledge hiding there are certain factors that engender knowledge hiding this is again from one of our study which has categorically underscored some of the antecedents that that are related to knowledge hiding some of the factors that engender knowledge hiding one we had a brief discussion about that in the previous lecture if you remember job security job insecurity when you are at a place where you don't know whether you will have the job next month or the next year or maybe uh, uh, you know after 6 months you tend to hold on to your core competency and your core knowledge very tightly you don't tell to or you don't try to you know share knowledge every now and then so this is what makes job insecurity all the more critical relevant factor or factor engendering knowledge hiding or a, or an important antecedent i will also like to quote one of our studies here which looked into the employee experience when we looked into the employee experience and the propensity to hide knowledge it was found out that people who are just into the organization people who are just into the organization and we put a time frame of 5 years and 10 years and then 15 plus people who are below 5 years into an organization there is a larger propensity of hiding knowledge and this is mainly because of the job insecurity any any organization any job if you are just into the system there is a possibility that you may be thrown out so there is a possibility of job insecurity very much you know moving around or moving over you even in every single day in your life in that particular organization because you are just into the system now so that job insecurity has indeed translated into one of the most important antecedent of knowledge hiding another important aspect which we briefly touched is reciprocity when you look into knowledge hiding i talked about the distrust loop and i'll try again mention about it we have a trust deficit with certain individuals we have certain problems with those individuals so moment we some they are asking us some knowledge there is a possibility that i might withhold knowledge i hope this is the situation which each, each one of you so in those particular situation if you are withholding information and they know that you know but unfortunately they you are not disclosing anything it, there will be a time when you are in the receiving end you will ask so there the perpetrator might be the other person he or she might reciprocate in the same manner so reciprocity has emerged as one of the significant antecedent and i also pointed out about the distrust loop because you were asked something and you withheld knowledge that has created a significant distrust now 
when when you are asking something to them and they are withholding it creates a distrust loop and it emerges as a vicious cycle in the knowledge management platform within the organization another important aspect is non availability of knowledge management system many a time most of the organizations boast about having very robust knowledge management system but it is a fact that it is still a minority of organizations which can actually actually claim that they are having good knowledge management system many organizations do not have a systematic channelized knowledge management system where they can actually encourage and motivate the employees to actually share knowledge and this is one of the biggest lacunae this is one of the biggest issue every single organization without a clear knowledge management portal today is facing another important aspect could be with respect to the task now i will try to collectively take these these elements task interdependence task complexity and task uncertainty together when you are looking into you know you are being assigned a duty as as a as a chairperson of a particular committee or you are made a head of a particular department or you are you are heading some unit some strategic business unit in those cases if you want to actually understand or you have understood that there is knowledge hiding and if you want to put an end to that the easiest way would be to schedule tasks in such a way that it is interdependent schedule task or or make tasks in such a way that it is complex create tasks which are uncertain and complex so what happens here is that there is an inherent need which is generated within the employees to ask each other what is that particular task please help us it might be cross functional it might be say cross divisional it might be with respect to their own exchange of core competencies so please understand maintaining or if you are into task interdependence if you are seen task uh, uncertainty and you if you are seen task complexity these happen or these emerge as factors engendering knowledge hiding another important aspect which he, we have touched upon is personality trait we have detailed on the personality trait in the personality module but i would like to say if you look into the ocean the big five openness conscientiousness extraversion agreeableness neuroticism everything has some or the other connect towards knowledge hiding people who are more open they might not be interested in hiding knowledge but vice versa might be true so this is what the significance of personality traits is my scope is to underscore the factors engendering knowledge hiding so when you are looking into basically personality traits there are certain personality traits which actually trigger knowledge hiding then we come to emotional intelligence there are studies which have which have categorically shown us that emotional intelligence is having a clear correlation with knowledge hiding you are emotionally more superior you tend to stay away from such things but again there is a caveat that you look into situations like rationalized hiding like the emergence of you know knowledge hiding studies as if you recollect in in my previous class was mainly from white lies if you don't want to offend somebody you generally you know say some lie and that those are called as a white lie so emergence of knowledge hiding study itself has its place in 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 terms of emotional intelligence if you look into workplace ostracism workplace ostracism means that you are being ostracized you are being put aloof you are considered as a as a person of different lot or different system or you are not uh, considered as a person good enough to discuss something so when you look into workplace ostracism it has also emerged as one of the key criteria or key antecedent for knowledge hiding another important aspect would be interpersonal trust i have already explained about the distrust loop that has emerged and the reciprocity how it is leading to knowledge hiding so if there is interpersonal trust issues if there are trust deficit between people between employees between the levels you are going to see knowledge hiding inevitably and finally territoriality territoriality comes from the fact that 
you you are in a particular unit within the organization there is a inherent you know objective or inherent philosophy of the group to look inwards you are not going to share anything outside so this territoriality that this knowledge is mine this particular you know uh, you are part of a marketing team then anything any particular sales data that is emerging it you are you are thinking in a negative side that there is a possibility that it might be misused for against you so you tend to keep that particular knowledge with yourself there is a possibility that you come across a, a very fascinating idea and that can actually give your organization a total boost in terms of its production or process but the thing is that you feel that the superior or the boss is not going to acknowledge and appreciate it right away so you tend to wait so that knowledge is kept to your own territory your own department this qualifies as territoriality so these are the some of the factors that are understood as factors that engender knowledge hiding now when we look into the left side also we should look into the right side when there are some factors which categorically lead to knowledge hiding we have to also understand what happens if we have knowledge hiding in the system one thing is to understand the root cause go look into the antecedent and uh, you know try to solve it another way is to find out you know there is knowledge hiding existing you have found out that then how to mitigate that the first and the foremost step is ethical leadership you are not going to remove knowledge hiding from your organization without having proper ethical leadership please make a note of it if you are a person in the leadership position and you are abusing the position if you are a person who is propagating abusive leadership there are high chances that your subordinates are going to hide knowledge from you there are high chances that your subordinates are not going to be open to you in terms of ideas suggestions solutions reasoning towards problems etc so all these issues pertain to ethical leadership the second most important aspect is psychological safety now this is very important these days psychological safety is not just you know uh, giving a equal level playing field in fact it is to create an environment where every single individual has a chance to raise his or her opinion that is what psychological safety is there is an environment where i don't worry about stating my point i don't have any fear in stating that this is wrong in or this is right i don't care about anybody this is the this is the environment which will have psychological safety if you are thinking of any other environment very close to psychological safety it may not be psychological safety psychological safety starts and ends from the freedom to express your opinion without fear in a committee it could be in an organization it could be in a team it could be even within you know two or three dyads or triads of employees together they are sitting or discussing or brainstorming about some issues so please understand psychological safety creating an environment it is difficult but the role of the manager here is to create such an environment of psychological safety and that eventually will aid in mitigating knowledge hiding please understand such a situation where there is no psychological safety you are actually creating a breeding ground for knowledge hiding i repeat you are actually creating a breeding ground for knowledge hiding in that particular case the third most important aspect is lack of organizational politics we discussed we started the discussion of organization knowledge hiding specifically from organizational politics if you remember and out of all the organizational politics strategy i put controlling knowledge in the center stage because of the simple reason that everything else could be mitigated everything else could be tackled but the moment you are in the face of you are in the zone of controlling of knowledge and it is doing no good to you there is no other way than to perish first individually and then organization wise so please understand when you are looking into organizational politics it is also acting as a breeding ground for knowledge hiding so one of the key factors mitigating knowledge hiding would be to avoid or to to reduce at least 
the organization and politics. Another important aspect is time pressure. If you look and uh, analyze your own organization, there might be a possibility that many a time your boss gives you very short intervals. In those particular you know, setting where your boss is giving you very, very short interval, what happens is that you are not in a position to actually gather things properly and put it in a, in a well-rounded way. So what happens is you tend to hide some knowledge or sometimes uh, your co-worker comes in and, uh, you know, tries to lend a hand to help you, but you are a bit wary, bit, bit doubtful, bit skeptical about that person because you think that, you know, because of that particular issue, he may go and submit or she may go and submit it on time and you, you end up cutting a sorry figure. So this is what lack of time pressure, if you create such a situation, that also acts as a factor mitigating knowledge hiding. And finally, another most important aspect which can mitigate knowledge hiding is dynamic cultural strength coupled with pro-social motivation. So the moment you are having a very heterogeneous environment within your organization, if you are in a position to bring in a cultural strength altogether by pro-social motivation, then you are able to put an end to the knowledge hiding that is existing within the system. So these were some of the factors mitigating knowledge hiding. When you actually look into knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding, how these two factors coexist, we have to understand that knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding are variables, no doubt about it, but are not opposites of each other. This is a point which I'm trying to emphasize, re-emphasize again and again, because there is a possibility that non-existence you know, existence or absence of knowledge sharing need not be knowledge hiding. Lack of knowledge sharing specifically in an organization and knowledge hiding are different from the motivation point of view. I might not be even thinking of sharing knowledge because that has not come even to my mind. So why should I share knowledge? So it is different from knowledge hiding. So absence of knowledge sharing might exist and there are quite a possibility, quite different possibilities exist for the existence of you know, absence of knowledge sharing, but all this need not pertain to, all this need not lead to knowledge hiding specifically. The mere absence of knowledge sharing will not lead to knowledge hiding. It has to be intentional and always not deliberately motivated to harm others. When you are looking into the difference between knowledge hiding and employee silence, the factor which is most critical is the intentional withholding. So there is a third party which is requesting you knowledge, but still you are not disclosing that particular knowledge to that party or to that person. This makes it knowledge hiding and not employee silence. You are just keeping silent because nobody asked you. That qualifies as employee silence, but not knowledge hiding. So I hope that that sets the tone for the next module also. When you specifically look into knowledge management studies, they usually treat knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding separately. The former emphasizes mainly the cooperative collective efforts and, and common interest associated, whereas the latter is derived from private interest. When you are looking into knowledge hiding specifically, when you are looking into knowledge hiding specifically, private interest, individual motives, all this come as qualifying factors for knowledge hiding. So when you are looking into these two phenomena specifically, knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding, it may occur simultaneously within an organization exhibiting paradoxical challenges for the individual. So it might not be easy for you know, an organization to actually curtail knowledge hiding because there might be a clear understanding or existence of knowledge sharing also. So the paradoxical relationship between knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding is in line with the competition which highlights the simultaneity of the contradictory yet interdependent cooperative and competitive behaviors. So this is what makes the existence or the coexistence of knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding critical and it also makes the, uh, the attempt to reduce or mitigate knowledge hiding difficult. When you look into 
the existence, the coexistence as we discussed now of knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding. Knowledge sharing and hiding behaviors are confirmed to be coexisting and certain degree of knowledge hiding is sometimes acceptable. Now this acceptable word is bit confusing and there should not be any doubt. When you are talking about knowledge hiding, what is acceptable and what is not is something which is very tricky. The, the, the catch-22 situation can be mitigated by one factor. If there is a clear rationalization that this knowledge is important, is vital for the organization and you cannot part with that particular knowledge because you are sitting in an authoritative position and you have to keep the secrecy of that particular chair, then there is some justification to the fact that knowledge hiding is acceptable. But when you are asking some information, some knowledge, which you are otherwise, you have the freedom or liberty to access and you are being denied of that. You don't have, you are, you are communicated that you don't have the rights to know that or you are simply shunted out or you are being, uh, you know, played dumb with. All these situations are not acceptable in an organization. So when you look into the different factors, the strategies that are observed in knowledge hiding with respect to vis-a-vis -vis an organization, you see that rationalized hiding to a certain extent is acceptable, but not playing dumb, not evasive hiding and not counter questioning. When referring to different knowledge sharing conditions, the interplay between the sharing what we have discussed and the hiding behaviors seems to generate different outcomes. So in reactive knowledge sharing, although the sharer deliberately hides some knowledge, the questionnaire still has a good impression of the sharer because he or she responds to the question and expresses their willingness to help others. Now this is the catch-22 situation I was mentioning uh, just few seconds ago. When you are looking into uh, the sharer deliberately hiding some knowledge, but the questioner having still a good impression, the problem is that you are unable to understand the actual thin line of difference between knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding and many a time you are, you know, there might be possibilities that you you just see or oversee knowledge hiding and you cannot pinpoint knowledge hiding and further you cannot mitigate the same. Now the differential role of motivation on knowledge sharing and hiding is also an interesting aspect specifically with respect to this article. Research has shown that autonomous motivation Autonomous motivation is something which you might know and for the people who are not aware of autonomous motivation, it is something which is giving you pleasure to do. It is part of your system. Let's say you enjoy playing guitar, you enjoy doing that work. This is autonomous motivation, specifically a part of intrinsic motivation. There is no externality. There is no extraneous factors that has to trigger you to make that, that experience pleasurable, to make that work or that make that situation pleasurable. So that is autonomous motivation for you. So autonomous motivation is positively related to both the frequency and perceived usefulness of knowledge sharing. Now when autonomous motivation is negatively related to three forms of knowledge in the hiding. So you look into the playing dumb strategy, the evasive hiding strategy, the rationalized hiding strategy, you will see that autonomous motivation is negatively related. There is, there is a negative correlation between these two. So whenever there is hiding, so this in other words mean whenever there is hiding, be it, be it even rationalized hiding because to a certain extent I was justifying rationalized hiding just now. Even if it's rationalized hiding, even if it is playing dumb, even if it is evasive hiding, it is going to hamper or going to destroy your autonomous motivation, no doubt about it. When you are looking into identified motivation, 
Now, identified motivation is something which is different from autonomous motivation. Identified motivation is being a part of, let's say, being a part of a job role. It's your role or responsibility to do that. That is the identified motivation. You are part of the system. You are, you are, you know, heading a unit. You are supposed to do, do that. That is the identified motivation. Now, with that understanding, if you look into this study, identified motivation is negatively related to knowledge hiding as well. So, what we can conclude is that through additional exploratory observations of correlations between both identified and intrinsic motivation with the outcomes, it is found that both are positively related to knowledge sharing and not knowledge hiding. So, be it identified motivation, be it autonomous motivation, if you do not have, let us say, uh, you know, uh, if you have enough of uh, identified motivation or autonomous motivation, your affinity is more towards knowledge sharing and you want to run away from knowledge hiding. Now, the role of work design on knowledge sharing and hiding is also critical. Knowledge, social and task work characteristics as I have already discussed in terms of the antecedents of knowledge hiding are of particular relevance to knowledge management influence, specifically knowledge sharing and hiding because some of the factors are direct antecedents of knowledge hiding. When you look into work factors such as say managerial support for knowledge sharing, a knowledge sharing climate or maybe perceived competition in workplace and even commitment based versus transaction based governance mechanisms also influence sharing and hiding behaviors. There is no need to explain what do you mean by perceived competition. There is no need to explain what do you mean by knowledge sharing climate. But when you are looking into commitment based versus transaction based governance, you are part of a system. Your commitment is there. Your commitment is to the organization or you are not part of the organization simply for that particular salary or simply for the particular returns or benefits you are going to get from the organization. If that is the case, then it is more transaction based. You are in a relationship only if it is because it is transaction based or you are in the organization because you feel committed to the particular organization and you feel that this is where you are going to work and this is what you are going to build. So, may, there are may, many a time you feel that there are certain individuals who are mismatched for a startup. For that matter, you might have seen individuals who are a mismatch for any, any organization which has just begun or maybe a department, maybe a unit, maybe a center, etc. So, all these factors are actually contingent on the commitment based approach and not on transaction based approach. So, when you look into such situation, what qualifies or what embellishes this understanding is mastery climate. Remember, we already had in one of the modules a discussion on the mastery versus performance climate. Just ponder over, just think over in your organization, are you having a mastery climate or are you having a performance based climate? Mastery climate is where you are given the right environment to learn, to study, to do research, to, to understand the problem, solve the problem, bring on lot of ideas, etc. So, there is lot of learning possibilities. There is possibility, there is a chance for, you know, uh, realizing the potentialities. But what exactly do you mean by performance based climate? In those particular situations, you do not have any say. Your only motive is to defeat or to, you know, somehow come above your competitor who is, who could be your co-worker. So, are you in a performance based climate or are you in a mastery based climate that determines whether you are moving into the knowledge hiding realm or you are going into the knowledge sharing zone. So, when you are looking into, you know, there are theories like resource based view where knowledge is considered as a strategic resource. All these factors are governed by the basic understanding or basic premise that are you in a mastery based climate, organizational climate or are you part of a performance based organization climate. When you look into knowledge hiding and knowledge sharing, I would like to conclude this session by mostly I, I generally take a case but today I take a research paper altogether. I will look into one particular study which, which 
came across uh, you know in the in the journal of business research which looked into knowledge sharing knowledge hiding specifically from small family farms in this study based on small family farms following behaviors of knowledge sharing has been found when you look into business families specifically they merge family ties with business matters as they value collective family discussions for sharing ideas and knowledge and make decisions on a number of fronts including procurement sourcing innovations and operations now farming business families cooperate very closely with suppliers and consultants they are willing to share with them critical know-how ideas and operational problems of the business now farming business families favor the recruitment and training of non native frontline labor now this is interesting generally there is there should be a possibility of recruitment and training of native frontline labor but why they are going for that in the presence of perceived threats that is risk of knowledge appropriation from others business families deploy secrecy and politics in their interactions to hide essential business knowledge so while farm families maintain excellent interpersonal relations with family and friends socializing and interacting frequently they generally they generally avoid discussing issues concerning work so what happens with respect to stewardship behaviors is that stewardship behaviors encourage mainly farming business families to engage in knowledge sharing by deploying openness in their interactions with actors that they trust now the study asserts that yet knowledge sharing literature has not considered the simultaneous enactment of knowledge hiding alongside the exchange of knowledge sharing so basically this is what the study deals about the study has come maybe a couple of years before around 2021 or something 2022 i suppose what has happened specifically is they are of the view that knowledge hiding knowledge sharing is not integrated yet so this is what the lecture was all about there is a possibility that there exist knowledge sharing as well as knowledge hiding now the problem with that is we are not able to understand knowledge hiding particularly if we are not able to understand knowledge hiding particularly we are not able to measure knowledge hiding particularly and unfortunately we cannot look into any of the mitigating factors through this lecture i have clearly tried to deliberate on four things one i have tried to make you understand what specifically knowledge hiding is and how OBM organizational behavior management has got a severe critical connect with knowledge hiding these days because it has emerged as one of the center problems of organizational politics which is controlling knowledge second would be to understand knowledge hiding in terms of how it is happening what are the antecedents related to knowledge hiding specifically i have listed down on certain antecedents i have also took uh, you know initiative in actually identifying and relating how these antecedents actually work out in this environment third i've tried to underscore some of the mitigating factors some of the factors that can critically mitigate knowledge hiding like ethical leadership and finally i tried to conclude with one single warning that there exists both knowledge sharing as well as knowledge hiding in the system where you have knowledge sharing but you are unable to understand knowledge hiding all the efforts that you take to solve or to critically increase the knowledge sharing potential of the organization goes in vain because there is a diametrically opposite uh, construct altogether which is neither related to knowledge sharing nor can be you know uh, treated as an, any other counterproductive organizational behavior which is knowledge hiding if you are not able to understand it if you are not able to analyze it measure it you will not be able to mitigate it on that note Let's end this class on knowledge hiding and sharing specifically. Thank you for listening to me patiently. We'll see you in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye bye.